Brian Callahan was introduced with his press conference as the new head coach of the Tennessee Titans. We're going to talk about our first impressions and takeaways from that, as well as looking at some offensive and defensive coordinator candidates the Titans have reached out to. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get to it. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media in partnership with 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver with me as always is Justin Mello and Justin, how's it going today? Doing well. It's an exciting time to be a Titans fan, right? Lots to talk about. We got the introductory press conference for Brian Callahan. We've got some offensive coordinator candidates. We've got a defensive coordinator candidate, multiple media appearances. We've probably all sort of combed through and picked our takeaways from. So uh, definitely a lot to discuss here. Yeah, let's start with Brian Callahan's press conference. And just so everyone knows, for the remainder of our lives with Brian Callahan in the mix, we're going to call him Callie because that's what he's called. That's what Rand Carthon, one of the first things Rand Carthon said was, I'm going to stop calling him Brian Callahan because we call him Callie. And if you listen to last week's episode with Joe Goodberry, you may have noticed that Joe was calling him Callie quite a bit. So I think this is a thing. He is Callie. So let's talk about Callie's introductory press conference. And you mentioned some media, other media appearances he did. He was on the OTP, Official Titans podcast with Mike Keith. He did numerous radio appearances at the local sports talk radio stations around Nashville. But let's start with the press conference here because I think it was pretty interesting some of the things he said. Now, most of it, I think, was sort of coach speak or sort of standard what you'd expect to hear about the process and the the feeling of wanting to be in Nashville and calling it feeling like a family and saying it felt like what it was like in Cincinnati and wanting to cultivate, you know, a, a culture where everyone is excited to come to work and all this stuff that's kind of like good. Yes, we want that, but also like okay, you you're going to you're going to say that no matter who you are and what you what you believe when you get this kind of position, but I think just like starting off with the way Callie spoke about the people who got him here and what it meant to him to get to this position and the emotion that he spoke with and then when it the discussion flipped to football, it was like a, a switch flipped in his brain where he went from that emotional place to a very articulate, well-spoken, and you could tell that he is pretty clear about his philosophies when it comes to football, and you can tell he loves talking ball, so I thought that was really cool and interesting um, just to see that switch flip when he stopped talking about his personal stuff, which is great to see the emotion, you know, a guy like Reminds me of a guy like Dan Campbell, who's like very much a football guy. But when he starts talking about what it means to win the big game and to see these young men develop into good players and leaders, and you can tell how much he just cares as a person. Certainly, I'll I'll say, yeah, you know, you enjoyed watching him talk about his father, Bill Callahan and and Zach Taylor. Those are probably the, the two that got him the most emotional, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I agree that my biggest takeaway was I thought he was at his best when he was talking football. Yeah, for sure. Like when they really started asking football related questions about his philosophies and his beliefs on offense uh, and whatnot, I, I thought that's where he was most comfortable because he's a teacher, right? That's what Joe Goodberry right. told us. He's a teacher through and through. He's a football coach through and through, right? So I, I thought that was, I thought he was very honest when he talked about, you know, what did you learn from John Gruden's meeting room? Well, I was 14, right? Like I, not going to pretend I learned a lot about leadership at 14, but I certainly, you know, you pay attention. You're a, you're kind of a sponge, right? So I also thought, by the way, when he went on the radio, he gave a really good diplomatic answer about Derrick Henry. Yeah. Right. Where he talked about how, and, and I'm sure some of it was coach speak, but I don't think he's wrong, right? There's not an offense in the league that Derrick Henry doesn't fit into. And uh, I don't want to get on this topic, but it, it, it takes me back to a place where I, I don't think the average fan realizes um, how NFL personnel views Derrick Henry, right? Like how much of a unicorn and how special, not only as an outstanding player, but as a leader and a, a, by, a, not only vocal, but by example, Yeah. right? In the locker room and on the practice field. Like, so I believe Cali was genuine, right? When you talk about, I don't know that there's a team in the league that wouldn't want to have Derrick Henry. So I thought that was, uh, I thought he did a great job handling that question. And uh, yeah, yeah, I found him to be genuine. I really did in a lot of moments, right? I, I thought it was funny when I think it was uh, one of the radio appearances where he said after that first meeting with Ran, I was like, well, what is it? What's it going to take to get this done? Yeah. So to speak like, yeah, my agent certainly didn't appreciate me saying that, right? <laughs> Probably lose some of the year negotiation leverage, so to speak. But, uh, but um, it, it, I do think it kind of showcased how uh, you know happy he is to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that was pretty nice to hear was him talking about Will Levis and saying that there's so much good that we've seen, and I want to know how I can come in here and make that good even better and get the you know maximize him and get the most out of him. Again, 
something you'd expect the coach of the team to say that he just took over, but also good to hear it. And I think there's a lot of Titans fans who are wondering when we were going to hear some praise for the Titans rookie quarterback from the head coach because <laughs> Mike Vrabel wasn't too keen on doing that publicly in the media. Well, um, so that was nice, yeah. I, I want to add one thing about it. Uh, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most when he talked about Will Levis was he's got some pretty, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he's got some pretty special physical tools, and we want to see if we can bring that out of him and get more out of him. This is a very different quarterback than Joe Burrow, than the one Brian Callahan just worked with. And I want to make a point of that because we've talked a lot about, or the media has talked a lot about the path he's taken and all the different quarterbacks he's worked with, even, you know, not just from a physical skill set standpoint, but also a personality standpoint, how different Matt Stafford was from Peyton Manning and, and Carr. For example, well, I think Will Levis is a very different quarterback from Joe Burrow. On field, right? I don't think Joe, you know, call me crazy. Does he have elite physical tools? He's not an elite physical athlete. Joe Burrow is cerebral, right? right. It's the pre snap recognition leading to the post snap success, right? How he dissects defenses um, before the ball's been snapped. And I think with Will, it's more the opposite, right? And we've seen some of that throughout the rookie year. The physical tools are so special. But once in a while, we saw the, you know, the inaccurate throw or the poor read or, or not. You know, I think of the pick six against the Dolphins where maybe he should have dirted the failed mm -hmm. screen. But, he, you know, things like that. Right. So it's a very different quarterback from Joe Burrow. And uh, but the, it's, it's exciting. Right. Because because he's Brian Callie's done such a good job uh, working with so many different quarterbacks and adjusting not only his offensive beliefs and philosophies, but also adjusting the way he's coached them right throughout his time. And now he's got to do it again, right? He's got to, so to, you know, quote unquote, reinvent the wheel another time here yeah. and uh, deal with a very different quarterback, Will Levis, than the one he just dealt with for four or five years in Cincinnati. Right. And by all accounts, Will Levis is an extremely smart young man. I mean, he had a for very sure. high GPA in college. He got, yeah. you know, two and, degrees. And lives, lives, breeds, eats football, right? I'm not saying that. Certainly, he's, he's a psycho. I think you saw that during the Miami game, how pumped up he was at the end of it. No doubt about it. I, I just think where he has struggled at times is maybe uh, when he, you know, he's always trying to maybe make the big play because of that physical skill set, mm -hmm. right? So, whereas I think Joe Burrow's been, uh, I mean, it's early, obviously, right? But Joe Burrow's always been a bit more willing, I think, uh, to take what he's what the defense has given him. Yeah, and it was nice to hear that Will Levis has been in the building working out. Um, Callie said that, and he said they got a chance to connect, and Will's taking some time off now, but they'll get together again when he's back, so... All good things there. Cali talked about, you know, his offense. He was asked about his offensive philosophy, and his answer was mostly centered around the passing game. Of course, he mentioned you still got to be physical when you need to to be able to run the ball. But I think that there's a lot more emphasis here. And we talked about this last week based on clips we'd heard from him in the past, not necessarily talking about the Titans or to Titans media, but talking about the importance of the passing game and how that is how you win games in the NFL, right? And in this era of the game, with with such an emphasis on moving the ball through the air versus what the Titans philosophy has been for so long. I mean, since they moved to Nashville, with the exception of maybe the season and a half where uh, where Ken Wisenhunt was the was the head coach. But I think um, hearing about that offense philosophy again, just reinforcing it, it's encouraging to see which direction the Titans want to move. Talking about pass protection and Cali was going on and on about how every it's an everyone problem. It's not just an offensive line problem, which love that answer. Which doesn't mean that they don't want to improve the offensive line. I think people, some people took that a little bit too far, but it definitely, you know, the running backs have to be able to help in pass protection. The receivers have to get open. The quarterback has to navigate that pressure and be able to read pre snap get where the ball out on time. Yeah, too. get the ball out on time, read where the blitz might be coming from if that's the case. And so it is a holistic approach, but I'm glad that he talked about that as well. And just everything I heard was very encouraging. I didn't get any red flags from from what he was talking about. His defensive philosophy, I thought it was really interesting that they would even ask him about this since he's going to be the, you know, the offensive, he's an offensive guy. Um, he's probably going to hire a defensive coordinator to handle the defensive side. But I did love his answer here talking about how I know what gives me problems as an offensive coordinator, and that's the kind of defense I want us to run here. Wouldn't comment on a 3-4 versus a 4-3, which I can't even believe was a question, to be honest, that he would be able to answer a 3-4 versus 4-3 no right now. Um, but yeah, exactly. Like, but every team is multiple now. You don't have like a set front alignment that you use 3-4 versus 4-3. So he was like, I don't really know. I mean, a lot of 
what we do will be both. So, <laughs> but just talking about how there are defenses that have given him problems and that's the kind of defense he wants to have. I love that. I agree. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. Right. Because when you're an offensive minded guy like he is, and you have been essentially your whole life. I mean, sometimes we overstretch the, of course, yes, he's an offensive guy, but you learn a lot about defensive football along the way. Right. Especially when you're tasked with game planning for a defense, right. You learn a lot about it when you're in that role, but I think that makes the most sense, right. You should want a defense um, that you know is very difficult to prepare for, right? Because if it's if it's difficult for you to prepare for, then it's difficult for someone else to prepare for, yeah. right? So uh, certainly I, I think he hit the nail on the head on, with that one. Yeah, totally. Let's talk about, I think, anything else you want to say about Cali? I mean, we're going to get more and more information over the coming weeks and months, but I think that covers his press conference and the, the majority of the in- interesting comments he made to media this week. Last yeah, week. no, I I agree, right? I, I look, it's very obvious, and this is what Titans fans are most excited about. I'll end this part with this, um, that he wants to take this offense into the current century, essentially, right? I think he wants to have a traditional dropback passing game. He wants to have uh, be explosive. And yes, they just still want to run the ball and be versatile, but I get the impression that uh, the Tennessee Titans of old, the Derrick Henry-centric 30, 35 carries a game, is probably a thing of the past. Now, again... A, a, a point we keep glossing over, not you and I specifically, but in general, because I get it, we're all excited right now. They're going to have to go out and get some really good football players, right? Yeah. To sort of bring that dream to a reality, right? It's going to take a lot better than Andre Dillard, I think, to have a traditional drop back passing game, a better right guard, a better right tackle, uh, probably a better center as well, right? So a better receiver. So there are some things they're going to need um, to for them to get to where they want to go. I don't think with the current roster, certainly that they have all the answers based on, Oh, he, you know, he navigated similar issues in Cincinnati and, you know, they had protection. They, they found ways. It's different here. I think the quarterbacks, the receivers, everyone's different. Um, they're going to have to get some better football players, I think, to get where they want going. And they, and they know that obviously, um, but let's, let's not lose sight of that part of it. Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to getting better players, they also need to fill out a coaching staff. So let's talk about what we know so far We don't have a whole lot of word. One interesting thing that came out of the press conference that wasn't interesting but kind of was interesting was they, Callie was asked about his dad and potentially bringing his dad over from Cleveland to coach the offensive line. And he sort of said, well, he's under contract with Cleveland. And that was the extent of it. I may be reading too much. I may be reading too much into this, but it looked like his face, like maybe he did get a little excited about the idea (laughs) of bringing his dad over, even though he can't legally, not legally, but Within the rules of the game, he can't talk about that. Otherwise, it'll be hit with a tampering charge. But um, (laughs) I felt like his face lit up a little bit talking about Bill Callahan. But anyway, we don't have any new updates on really any position coaches. We heard people on both sides of the fence last week. Mary Kay Cabot and Mo Eggert were saying that it was likely that that Brian Callahan would bring his dad over and that Cleveland likely would allow it. And then we got a report from, I think it was Connor Orr on Sports Illustrated, um, saying that that didn't seem likely because Bill Callahan is one of the highest paid assistant coaches in the league and that the Browns have been very protective of him over the years. So still waiting to hear about what will happen with that. But we do have a lot of updates on the Titans staff specifically. A few people were fired or let go. Those people being Tim Kelly, Charles London and Stretch, Vrabel's guy Stretch, according to Paul Kaharski, have all been relieved of their duties I don't think it's a shock here to see that, you know, the coaching that the staff will have a lot of turnover. It's pretty common for a new head coach to come in and hire almost an entirely new staff. There may be one or two holdovers. I'm sure they will interview the position coaches currently on the team and see if uh, they like anyone and want to keep them around. The philosophies match or whatever. A guy like Terrell Williams, the D-line coach, stands out as someone who could be helpful to Brian Callahan, especially the fact that Terrell Williams was in that assistant head coaching role, coached that preseason game. He'll be a head coach at the Senior Bowl this week and um, a guy who's on the defensive side to help Brian Callahan. Another update, Tony Dews has taken a job with the New York Jets, so he is out as well. But um, we'll see over the coming weeks if any of these other position coaches are retained. My guess is maybe one or two will stand out to to Cali and be able to keep their position with Tennessee. But for the most part, it's going to probably be an entirely new staff. I agree with you. And I'm starting to think there might be no one retained yeah. on the offensive side of the ball, right? Because, okay, Tim Kelly getting fired, uh, no shock. Charles London, I was on the fence about. Yeah. Just because um, he's so well-versed in, uh, you know, fairly well-versed in Cali's offense, right? Uh, what we really think his offense will look like. Um, a quarterback coach that Will Levis really seemed to get along with as well. So I thought there was a chance he'd be retained. 
Um, but here we are with uh, with uh, sounds like he's out. He's been uh, granted permission. I think was the words used to interview elsewhere. And I don't think we quite got that he's been fired. Well, Paul Kuharski uh, reported that he has been fired. So I don't know if that's set I in stone. I think but... if you looked at Paul Kuharski's story, it said Tim Kelly had been fired and Charles London has been a la- like given permission, like in the actual body of the story. I could be yeah. wrong, but the headline either way, is he... Tim Kelly, Charles London fired as Titans begin coaching staff. The headline. Purge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. He didn't say it in the body, I don't think, but okay. Uh, but again, same thing, really, because I don't expect certainly we don't expect them back at this point um, following that update. So, I, I, you know, there are a couple other offensive coaches we haven't heard on Justin Auten. That's a guy that's pretty well versed in this in this system as well. We haven't heard yet on the O-line coach, Jason Hotailing, but I'd be, I think I said be pretty stunned there, especially with, you know, Bill. Uh, his father coaching O-line uh, and whatnot. So, but I'm starting to think, like I said, defensively, maybe a Terrell Williams, maybe a Ryan Crow. That's mm-hmm. done a pretty decent job with the outside linebackers. You know, Bobby King, the inside linebackers coach, is essentially a Vrabel guy through and through. Uh, Chris Harris is interviewed for multiple defensive coordinator positions already. So has Shane Bowen. Um, neither of those guys is going to be back, it seems yeah. to me. So, uh, no, you're absolutely right. I'm expecting an entirely new staff, maybe one or two holdovers. Right. So until we know more about what that's going to look like, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. But we can talk about the two offensive coordinators candidates and the one defensive coordinator candidate that the Titans have reached out to about interviewing for those positions. Let's start on offense. Nick Holtz and Eric Studesville are the two names that we have heard Nick Holtz, what do we know about him? Who is he? And how could he help the Titans working under Cali as a as an offensive coordinator? So first things first, and uh, if you're a Mike Vrabel hater, you're probably not going to love this part of it. But uh, Nick Holtz and Brian Cal- and Cali, surprise, surprise, have deep rooted ties mm-hmm. to one another. Right. They went to high school together. Yeah, They played football, out loud. high school football. Yeah, they, together. Were, they were on the same high school football team. Uh, and then uh, Holtz, when he got into coaching his first job, was at Nebraska in 2007. If you're a hardcore Titans fan, you probably know this already. Bill Callahan was the head coach at the time of Nebraska in 2007. Uh, and then he moves to Stanford. Gets some interesting experience there. Worked under, uh, I believe, what, Jim Harbaugh and David Shaw. I mean, that's pretty interesting, right? Worked under two really good was, offensive um, coaches. Was pretty widely credited with helping in whatever way he could Andrew Luck's <laughs> development, which Andrew Luck probably would have been a great quarterback no matter who was coaching him. But it's still <laughs> nice to see that, you know, he has experience working sure. with a, a high-level quarterback like that. This was fairly low-level experience at yeah. this point. But that's how you get your foot in the door. I think even the first – I think at Nebraska, I think one of his gigs was video intern or something <laughs> like that. So um, uh, get some good experience at Stanford. He's there for like four years, I think. Ends up with the Oakland Raiders where eventually in 2018 would work and reunite with Brian Callahan, who was on that staff the first year. So again, lots of ties here between Holes Callahan and really the Callahan family, essentially. Um, I think what's most interesting to me about him, I'll be honest with you, is uh, he survived like four coaching changes with the Raiders. That's, you know, think of a guy that did that in Tennessee, Arthur Smith. He's a pretty good head coach, and that's why he did that, right? So I think it started with, I don't even know, I think Dennis Allen, I think was the first head coach he worked under. And then it was uh, Jack Del Rio, and then John Gruden kept him. And then I, this one is three, we should call it three and a half, yeah. because when Gruden got fired and Rich Bisaccia was interim, Bisaccia kept him. Counts doesn't count. I mean, we've seen interim guys fire assistant coaches like the next day. Uh, this year, when when Brandon Staley was fired, the Chargers interim got rid of like two assistants the following yeah. day. Obviously, didn't like them very much. Uh, but Bisacci had kept them, so it essentially survived four coaching changes. Uh, pretty big deal, I guess. Only finally got pushed out when Josh McDaniels came in and brought in his whole offensive staff, like Cali's probably doing right now. Right, so. He ends up going to UNLV first year as an offensive coordinator. Only time he's ever worked as an offensive coordinator. One year there had some success Uh, again, UNLV, right? Not, you know, call it what it is. Right. But uh, nice to see him have success. I think they put up 26 points per game, something along those lines this past year, passing game coordinator in the AFC South with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Look, I'm not, eh, you'd be silly to put it all on him. No, they didn't take the step forward they wanted to. Trevor Lawrence didn't take the step forward. Uh, the passing game did not take the step forward, right? Uh, if you're if you don't if you're a Jacksonville fan, you probably don't like the guy very much, right? But if you're 
sort of level-headed like we are. We know there's so much more that goes into that. Uh, and that was a tough gig with, you know, Trevor Lawrence had some injuries. I think there were some issues with Doug Peterson. I, like I said it in the off season, someone praised me recently on the draft networks, discord uh, channel uh, reached out to me and said, I remember you saying in August Jacksonville was a little too content. They didn't take the step forwards in personnel that they needed to No, They felt like they did have a bit of a content off season. So I, I think their issues go way beyond him um, this past season, but Uh, Is he a candidate that super excites me? Uh, Look, we don't know a lot about the guy and I'm not going to pretend to. Um, And, but don't, this is what I don't like. Let's not sit here and say, oh, well this hire, it doesn't really matter because Cali's going to call plays. And I I, look, yes, Cali's going to call plays, but it doesn't mean the offensive coordinator doesn't matter, right? (laughs) You want to hire someone who's going to be very, very good at assisting you in that. We just hired a head coach that was an offensive coordinator that didn't call plays, right? You want to have, a good hard worker in that role like they had in Cali, yeah. right? In, in Cincinnati. So uh, Nick Holt, again, not going to pretend to know a lot about him, not bad mouthing him by any stretch of the imagination. Don't know the, don't know him. Don't know much about his coaching philosophies. Like some of the stuff on his resume. Don't like some of the other stuff. Again, not a lot of high level uh, coaching experience. Never been an NFL offensive coordinator. One year of college uh, coordinating experience. Um, obviously the deep rooted ties here do certainly plays a role in his candidacy, um, reminds me a little, and people again, they're going to take this as negative. It's not a negative reminds me a little of when Ken Wisenhunt hired Jason Michael, right? Like Jason Michael didn't call plays, came in really just assisting him. Jason Michael still works in the NFL, by the way, he was employed by Nick Sirianni on the mm. Philadelphia Eagle staff, went to a Super Bowl last year. So, uh, uh, but it reminds me a little of that. Yeah, absolutely. So he's not necessarily my favorite of the two, but I think he's an interesting candidate. And then the biggest feather in his cap is what you mentioned there about being able to survive multiple head coaching changes. And, you know, we've, like you said, we saw that with Art Smith and what a great offensive coordinator he became for two years in Tennessee before getting that head coaching opportunity. The other name is Eric Studesville, currently with the Miami Dolphins. Sounds familiar. You're not familiar? I thought you were uh, pretty highly connecting him in Cali way before this process even started. I did mention him last week as a pote- on this episode. I, I think it was was it the Goodberry episode? I think it was, or maybe I think was, it was. Yeah. I did, yeah, it was. Where I mentioned him as a potential offensive coordinator candidate. Uh, look, I'm pretty good at what I do. I don't know what else to say. Uh, no, um, six years experience with Cali in Denver. That was the big dot connector. I'm nothing special. That was a very very obvious uh, dot connection for me. But it was beyond that. It was uh, currently a run game coordinator and assistant head coach with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I believe he survived a couple of changes there, by the way, in Miami. He survived a couple of them in Denver. He was he was an assistant in Denver, became the interim head coach, and then they kept him the following year on staff despite not giving him the full-time title. So this is a highly respected coach. I think the big thing for me here is, of course, again, very well-versed in this offense, has worked with the Kubiaks and the, you know, the Shanahans, yada, yada. Uh, now even in Miami with Mike McDaniel, right, an olive branch of the Kyle of the Shanahan offense, right? So uh, obviously well versed in this system, but I think what ex- what makes the most sense to me about his candidacy, besides that, and besides having a personal relationship with Callahan, which again Holtz has both of them, what he has that Holtz doesn't is, uh, you know, he's fifty six years old, he's been an interim head coach. We're talking about an extremely experienced guy. Now I think when you're a first time head coach like Cali is. Um, I think there, that's a very helpful resource to have someone on staff that's been a head coach, even if it was for seven, eight weeks, whatever it was. Uh, he's been in that role. He knows what it's like to lead an entire team. You know him well, six, seven years. He's well-versed in this offense. Did a great job as the run game coordinator with the Dolphins this past year. He's been a running backs coach for the majority of his career, so he'll help a lot with the run game stuff. If you're a pass game guy, he'll be your run game guy. Help keep you well-balanced if you're leaning too heavily, maybe, uh, towards pass. And sometimes you might not even know you're doing it, right? right? But it takes someone on staff to sort of reel you back in. Um, this is one that makes a lot of sense to me based on what I, you know, in my humble opinion, some of the qualities that Cali should probably be looking for. Experience would be very high on my list as a first time guy. And Eric, Eric Studesville checks a lot of boxes for me. That's why I mentioned him before we even knew he was a candidate. Yeah. And I, I think that the idea of Cali being this, you know, quarterback guru, passing game guy, bringing in someone like Studesville to balance him out, like you, like you kind of said there, a guy who's an expert in run game coordination and running backs coach and all that, and how many years he survived in Miami. He was a co-offensive coordinator the year before Mike McDaniel got hired. Mike McDaniel kept him on staff, like you said. That's it's crazy if you think about it. Yeah. Sorry, that's, that's crazy. Like, 
when you're coming in and you're getting rid of the offensive coordinator, yet you still decide to, as the offensive play caller yourself, can you imagine what, uh, what did we think there's a chance Cali was going to keep Tim Kelly as his running games coach or running backs coach right. or something? You know what I mean? Not a chance in hell. So speaks volumes uh, of what Mike McDaniel thinks of the guy too. Right. So I think he's a really impressive candidate. He would be, you know, of the two names, we've only heard two names, but of those two names, he would definitely be my top choice. And I think that, Certainly. Like you mentioned, the experience factor there to, again, balance out a guy like Callie, who is pretty young, relatively inexperienced compared to a guy like Studesville. He's probably seen it all. And again, that idea that you can survive multiple head coaching changes and stay on staff means that you're pretty impressive in, in terms of your qualifications and your performance at your job. So big fan of Eric Studesville. We'll wait to see where the Titans move in that direction. Let's talk about the defense, the one defensive coordinator candidate that we've heard of. And this one is super exciting to me because... I was a huge I fan throughout the, the coaching search process. I was a huge fan of Mike McDonald, and I love the way that you know McDonald is innovative and the coordination he's done with the Baltimore defense. Well, the guy the Titans want to interview for defensive coordinator worked under Mike McDonald this past year. He was a, a DB coach in Baltimore, and before that, he was in Philly as the DB coach. Denard Wilson. Now, the Titans might have some competition here because Wilson is going to be interviewing or has already interviewed for the Giants defensive coordinator position, and the Rams also have interest in him for their defensive coordinator position after Raheem Morris was hired to be the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. So, some competition here, which is a good thing, I think, because that speaks to how you know highly thought of Denard Wilson is amongst the league circles, but also it could mean the Titans don't get their first choice defensive coordinator candidate. Now that the Ravens have been eliminated from the playoffs, it'll be interesting to see how quickly Denard Wilson takes one of these three job op op opportunities he has in front of him between the Rams, the Giants, and the Titans. But I would hope that he'll uh, he'll choose the Titans because as of now, we haven't even heard of another potential option that the Titans are looking at. <laughs> well, is there not a fourth there in Baltimore, potentially, if Mike if McDonald, Mike McDonald gets moves a head coaching on, yeah. job? Right. He's meeting in person this week, I believe, with... Uh, Seattle Seahawks general manager John Schneider and Seattle obviously waited this long uh, to interview him. So I think that that says a lot about their interest in him. Uh, Denard Wilson is an extremely interesting candidate to me. Number one, before we knew about uh, Nick Holtz and, and, and Eric Studesville, it struck me immediately. And I appreciated that Cali had identified someone who he didn't have apparently a connection with. I mean, look, I'm, I'm sure they know that he knows the guy in passing some way or another when you're in the NFL. It's not a very big league, but the fact that he's never worked with him directly on a staff, um, I thought was really intriguing to me. This is a guy that played a little bit of ball. Was it, I mean, a little bit of ball. I mean, he was a UDFA, signed in uh, 2004. Began coaching with the Rams in 2012 as a quality control assistant. Uh, spent a lot of time on that staff with the Rams uh, under Jeff Fisher. Right, who was the head coach of the Rams at the time. Say what you want, a great head coach and a really good defensive-minded um, head coach. Guess what? Rand Carthon was on that staff for five years with Denard Wilson, right, as the director of player pers personnel. So, uh, we, you know, we, we saw the press conference. We heard Miss Amy's statement. Uh, uh, Rand Carthon was going to have control over the staff, uh, oversight over the staff, call it what you want. I wonder if it's a name he may be elicited and said, hey, this is a guy that I worked with was really impressive uh, back then, and he's only climbed the ladder ever since. He was with the Jets from 2017 to 2020, where he worked under Todd Bowles, Greg Williams, Mike Caldwell, went to Philadelphia, worked under Jonathan Gannon. Like He's been a part of some really, really good staffs. And one thing that I found really funny, if you go through the history, I think Zach F. Words Pod might have tweeted this at some point, but if you go through the history, like every defense he's been a part of got like really bad after he left. Right? I think it'd be pretty silly to put all that right on on him or, or credit him with that but very interesting that all his defenses that he's been a part of have done really really well and then some of them tanked the year he left and the, the new ones he went to did really really good so everything i hear this is a really exciting candidate he's an ascending coach uh lots of uh certainly lots of competition it seems like might be some internal competition you might not even have a chance in all honesty right, right? if if harbaugh offers him that gig if mike mcdonald goes i, I imagine he takes it instead of taking a change of scenery um, but you never know, I guess. And uh, but really, really intriguing candidate. Yeah, definitely. Ben Fennel, if anyone knows who Ben Fennel is, he's a producer for NFL Fantastic. shows on, on CBS and Amazon Prime. He's a, a great analyst that, you know, great Twitter follow, I should say. And uh, he tweeted out um, yesterday, Denard Wilson, just 41 years old, rising star. He'll be a DC and then head coach soon. D'Amico Ryan's like presence with players. So wow. obviously he seems like a, a rising star candidate that the Titans could get their hands on 
on the one side, it'd be great to get him for a year, maybe two, and then you might expect him to go on and get his own head coaching opportunity somewhere. But still, you get some comp picks out of that too, though, right? You would. Be the worst thing you absolutely would. So uh, let's uh, let's Titans bring him in, make it happen. Don't let the Giants come yeah. in and snake. Giants fans are super excited about him, and they're saying like, let's go hire him right now because the Ravens are eliminated. So we'll see what happens there. Um, that's it. That's all we got for coaching staff updates. Justin and I are going to have a couple more videos on the YouTube channel coming out very soon because it's Senior Bowl week and we're going to oh, break yeah. down both sides of the ball, prospects to watch, names to know for both the Titans and just in general prospects that could go on to do great things in the NFL. We see it every year. The Puka Nakua is coming out of the Senior Bowl. The Debo Samuels, there's there's guys every year that make a huge impact in the league after you know showing up and, and coming onto the scene at the Senior Bowl and this year's class is really interesting because juniors, there are 11 underclassmen in uh, on this year's Senior Bowl rosters, which is the first time they've allowed that to happen. So more talent than ever at the Senior Bowl. We're going to break that down. Justin, anything else you want to say on this episode before we sign off? Well, you think I know a thing or two about the Senior Bowl this year? <laughs> you've only been... 50, 52 <laughs> interviews. Yeah, you've only been interviewing most of the players that are there. 52 of them. It's... Uh was quite the series certainly yeah. uh, was was crazy to oversee and execute and conduct but i got to know these guys very very well over this last uh, about month and a half two months that i've been doing it so really excited for them all nice all right so we'll be back for that stay tuned to the channel make sure you are subscribed to the music city audible drop a comment below what are you most excited about with cali who are you looking forward to being the offensive or defensive coordinator for the titans let us know in the comments below like i said we'll be back soon with more content so until then Y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.